Hey everybody, I'm Axel, the Wonder Shredding Witch. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you're all having a wonderful week so far. Today I'm going to be talking about my favorite spirits, undead, and ghosts in fiction. As always, I would love to chat with you guys in the comments below about your favorites, and if you could do all the other things to please the algorithm gods, I would vastly appreciate it. Otherwise, on to today's list. Coming in at number five is Ben Hargreaves from the Umbrella Academy. It hits home a little personally for me, and so I've always just really enjoyed the relationship that that Klaus has with him, even his other siblings, but especially Klaus, obviously, and it's just a unique situation that is a bit cathartic. So he had to be on this list. Coming in at number four is Bob from the Dresden Files. Though he's not an undead spirit, he is still a spirit in the most fundamental sense, and I just love this little guy. I say little guy because he's a skull most of the time, until he's not. Um, and then sometimes he's Mr. the Cat, or Evil Bob. Evil Bob was a savage, and I'm a fan of Evil Bob. I know that I shouldn't be, but I am. And so his whole character, and you know, he, he is a crass dude, but I still love most of what Bob represents, and he is just one of my favorite spirits of all time. Coming in at number three is Carmilla. In any of her incarnations, she is just a wonderful, beautiful badass. She's a canon bisexual in a few of her iterations, and when she is in Castlevania, I just love how unhinged and savage and brutal she is. And I think what my favorite part is, is you can almost never really disagree with her motivations or her actions. Like, yeah, she's batshit crazy and is trying to literally take over the world. However, she just wants to take it over from dumb, stupid, usually old men that have fucked over the world in general. And you, I can't disagree. So, pop off. And even... At the end, she will not have a man take her. She will not give him the satisfaction. Nope. She will take her own life and just obliterate the entire, like, floor. And I was such a fan. I was so for all of her actions. She was by far one of my favorite villains and by far one of my favorite vampires I have ever read about or seen in anything. I, I get the Dracula is a classic, but Carmilla over Dracula any day. Coming in at number two is Donnie from Ashes. This one, again, it hits home in a really visceral way. And I think that's why I love this journey so much. But also the, the way we kind of get to know Donnie through Angela's memories is just... It rocks you. And so when we do get our, you know, visits from Donnie or our flashbacks, it all builds up character for someone we don't actually get much interaction with on a like actual reader and character level, if that made if that made any sense. I don't know if that made sense. But I just really appreciate how we were able to learn about Donnie from Angela's memories. It was almost akin to how we learned how fucked up Ozai was from the relationship that he had with his children. We can learn a lot from how people remember them and talk about them and what they are willing to do for them both while they are here and when they're gone. So this whole story was just a roller coaster and I was here for it and Donnie will always hold a place in my heart now. An honorable mention is Rayla from the Dragon Prince. She's not dead or a ghost in any other manner than like title. As their community, their tribe of the Moonshadow Elves, if someone has done something worthy of being shunned, disgraced, and like banished, they are called a ghost because they can't see them. They literally block them out from their senses and ignore them in the highest level possible. 
and I just found that really fascinating. But again, she's not an actual ghost or a spirit, it is just the title, and I found it very, very cool. The last one on this list is a spoiler for The Dresden Files, and so if you do not want that spoiler, skip to the time listed below. Otherwise... The last one on this list, last but not least, is Harry Dresden himself, when he tries to kill himself, or get himself killed, after making the deal with Mab, he is then stuck in between as a ghost, as a spirit, um, and I just really liked that we got that ride along as a ghost, and how it was visited, and how the whole shebang went. And I also just found the loophole very satisfying. Most of the time, one, you can't kill your main characters without it being like the end. And so I loved how that was how that was like the continuance, and it was just really well done in my opinion, and it's just one of my favorites of the Dresden Files. So Anyway, that's all I've got for you guys today. I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of their week. As always, I would love to chat with you guys in the comments, but otherwise, until next week, spread a little love and joy you can. Bye!